decided that I'm tired of wearing the same clothes every single day. Literally the same pants on rotation. So it's time to go thrifting. Um, yeah. I've just completed my obnoxiously overpriced breakfast, but it was fine because I forgot to eat before I left because I was in a rush to make sure that I got to L train. So I'm going to L train to thrift and I wanted to make sure that I got here like early because thrifting in Manhattan scares the shit out of me and people are scary and I get intimidated by all the people there. So I wanted to get here early and then I realized they don't even open until 12. So yeah, I had a little breakfast, spent too much money, and now I'm gonna go hopefully spend some more money at L Train and hopefully not cry of intimidation. Did y'all see those prices? I'm just so baffled. $30 for a thrifted t-shirt that had a stain on it. And the design wasn't even that cute. And that wasn't even the highest price that I saw in that store. T-shirts going for upwards of $40, $50. I even saw one for $125. What is this? This is not a vintage curated little Bella Hadid pop-up shop. This is L Train Vintage. This is supposed to be a thrift store. These prices were not giving thrift. And it felt a little bit racially motivated because the prices were like quadrupled the prices that they normally are in Brooklyn. Moral of the story is, I will never be going thrifting in Manhattan again. I will never be returning to this Eldrain vintage again because that was a scary experience. Scary experience. <laughs> The last L train felt like genuine highway robbery and I didn't even purchase anything. So that was terrifying and I immediately ran and somehow I just ran all the way back to Brooklyn. So I'm back in Brooklyn. I'm gonna go to the L train that's in Brooklyn because I feel like I trust that one. Like I was trying to do something different because I was like, ooh, maybe the other one will have better options. But I've realized everybody thrifts in Brooklyn anyways and I kind of see why now because 
those prices were so astronomically like not making sense like legitimately a t-shirt with a stain on it they were trying to sell for thirty dollars so that was confusing and and there was like a lot of people in there too like actually like picking up stuff so like i was a little bit worried so i'm hoping that this one in brooklyn is a little bit like you know because maybe they do that because it's manhattan so it's like touristy so hopefully this one will be a little bit better i know i'd probably be better off just going to like goodwill or something like that but goodwill goodwill scares me a little bit like sifting through bins of clothes is like a little bit too much sometimes like sometimes i like a little bit oh my god there's so many pigeons sometimes i need a little bit of like the curatedness of like the vintage shops but not as curated as like there's like beacon's closet and there's like l train vintage and then there's just like the uber uber vintage ones i normally stick with like l train vintage where it's like the price range is like seven dollars normally maximum like 14 kind of is like the maximum never in my life have i seen like 40 dollars so yeah i already feel 40 times calmer now that i'm back in brooklyn and it's just like silence
kind of decided that I don't really think I like thrifting anymore. I don't know if it's just a phase or if I'm ever gonna like thrifting again, but I think I'm out of my thrifting era. So I'll show you what I got and then I guess I'll explain. I only got four things. I got this first t-shirt. It just says London. Um, I liked the London vibe because I'm hoping to go to London. So it's not as oversized as I wanted it to be, but I figured it was still like oversized enough. I was going for like uber, uber, uber maximum oversized effects like i wanted everything to be extremely extremely large because i've decided that my style is leaning more towards like mask oversized like i'm kind of leaning out of the femininity aspect whatever that means i don't know oversizedness is where i'm going with things but yeah i i also liked the london print on this and i like the color mix that it has i got this t-shirt have no idea what it is it says Honolulu, Harley Davidson. Didn't even know that they had Harley Davidson in Hawaii, but you learn something new every day. It has this on the back. Something I noticed with thrifting, I don't know if it's just the area that I was in or anything like that. There's a lot of American flags. And like I'll see a top or like a t-shirt with a nice oversized fit that I want and then I pull it out and it's just like a big fat American flag. And I'm like, well now I, I don't, I feel less, I, I'm not inclined anymore to purchase. This one has an, a tiny little American flag, but it's like so small. And it's like in the back, so like I'm not gonna see it, other people will see it. My biggest issue is like with me seeing it, I think. It's huge, I like huge. Next top, I don't know why we're taking so long to show t-shirts. I got this one, it says Iowa State, very nice. Very oversized, like the orange and the red. Not really a top at all. It's like this windbreaker material thing over thingy majigger. Yes, it says Equinox. That way people could think I'm an Equinox instructor or maybe that I can afford Equinox things. By the way, all four items were $7. Or one of them might be eight, but like seven and eight dollars. Sorry for the anticlimacticness. Sorry that literally it's nothing special but i realized I, I don't think thrifting is for me i think thrifting is such a talent i think i envy and i admire the people that are able to walk into thrift stores and just sift through hoping and 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 spending the whole time sifting through just to possibly only get like one really good killer item but i just don't have the patience i think the Gen Z in me just can't, I can't, I don't have the patience for that, which is so interesting because thrifting is such a Gen Z thing, but it's like, it really requires so much patience to really just go through every single thing because you don't know if you don't go through everything, if you're going to miss something amazing, but at the same time, it's like, there's over hundreds of pieces here. You, I don't know. That was my first quandary. Also like like the effort aspect, I don't know. It just made shopping a lot of effort. Then my second quandary is um, actually the affordability, but like not in like a, you know, like I have been trying to lean a little bit more to being more minimal. I put the quotations because I do not want anybody who is actually a minimalist to try to come for my entire neck, disconnect my head from my body. Like, I'm not a minimalist, okay? I'm trying to not have an abundance of things and I'm trying to like get rid of and donate a lot of things that I know I don't put on enough for it to still be sitting in my closet or for it to still be sitting on my shelf or whatever. And I think thrifting gives me this like it feeds the desire to do the opposite of downsizing because things are more affordable i feel like i treat it like how i treated fast fashion where it's just like you know i'm not really in love with this piece but i'm still gonna get it because it's you know more affordable than something else it just defeats the purpose of what i'm trying to do you know so like for me it's just i don't think it's working anymore am i absolutely obsessed to the nines with them no so it's like, why did I really buy them? You know, that's what I'm saying. That's my vibe. I probably won't be thrifting for a while. It's also just so, that was like taxing. That was really draining. That was very draining. Sorry for the anti-climax of this. I guess this was a thrifting fail, um, but I tried. We won't be trying again. Uh, yeah.
quick little book update because I feel like I, I have to add these into every single video now. You guys remember I was on Air of Fire the last time you saw me uh, by Sarah J Mass, the Throne of Glass series. I'm I'm not I'm I'm not feeling it as much. Uh, Air of Fire is when we meet two new characters and we're in well, a lot of new characters. Air of Fire is just like a whole different. It's new. It's very new. Um, there's new point of views and. I'm just not necessarily feeling the new characters as of yet. So like every time it switches to their point of view, I'm like, oh my God. Like I don't really care for men in black, bleak, black, beat, black, beat. I don't know. I don't care for the witches storyline right now. And I don't care for the little healing girl storyline, Sorsha. I, I don't really care right now. So like I'll probably be into the characters later down the line. But right now, you're like throwing these characters at me and I don't really care about them. So it's making me a little bit bored. I was expecting to finish this a lot faster, but I'm only 100 pages in and I literally dog-eared it. I know a lot of people get upset when people dog-eared. I, I would lose a bookmark. I don't know what to tell you. I literally dog-eared it right as we're hopping right back into Man in Black Beak. I don't... I just... I heard Selena not literally the same person that was that that's just kind of what i was recognizing like they have a, a very similar character voice the like badass will kill you in your sleep type individual anyways whatever 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 so it's moving a little slow so i decided to take a break which i feel like is good you know i've been reading the sarah j mass books back to back to back i think i need a break maybe from her writing style so i think i'm gonna read lore and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, since this only has one book, it's not, <laughs> this one just came out, I think in 2021. So there's, there's not another one. So I could read this on its own and not be sucked into a world of 80,000 freaking books. And I was excited to read Lore because it's set in New York City. And I feel like I'm wanting to read a New York City, I'm wanting to read a more modern urban fantasy vibe. This one is very like high fantasy with the Victorian era. I'm. I'm, 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 I'm getting a little bit, you know, bored of the kings and the queens type energy. So I want something new, especially for like inspiration for like writing my own story. I feel like, yeah, that's my book update. Thanks for coming to my TED talk.